President Trump is now fighting with members of his own party who think he's dangerous, unstable, and a threat to national security. And on top of that, he's threatening media outlets that report on him. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Trump has fallen short repeatedly on his signature initiatives from the border wall to repealing Obamacare, so now he's trying to convince people he's succeeding by reciting random numbers about the economy, numbers he himself derided as a candidate. Trump told Forbes in an interview, we're accomplishing a lot. Your stock market is at an all-time high. Your jobs, your unemployment is at the lowest point in almost 17 years. Your stock market? <laughs> Your jobs? He sounds like a terrible Russian spy who forgot he was undercover. <laughs> Your flag is very beautiful. I mean, our flag. <laughs> the flag of the United States. <laughs> Scars and stripes. <laughs> but Trump's obsession with stock market numbers hasn't helped him much, so now he's trying to bounce back with what he thinks is a surefire crowd pleaser, tax cuts. Now, even the most positive polls have found public opinion very split, with at most 48% of respondents saying they approve of Trump's tax plan. But when you're as desperate for good news as Trump is, you'll take 48%. And on Tuesday, he tried to claim the plan was a massive hit. The people of this country want tax cuts. They want lower taxes. We're the highest taxed nation in the world. People want to see tax cuts, they want to see major reductions in their taxes, and they want to see tax reform. I will tell you that it's become very, very popular. I'm sorry, but something cannot be very popular if it only has 48% approval. <laughs> Unless it stars Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> now, incidentally, the Rotten Tomatoes critics' consensus for Jackass somehow perfectly describes the Trump administration. There's a good chance you'll be laughing hysterically at one stunt, but getting grossed out by the next one. <laughs> now, now, you might have noticed in that clip that Trump repeated his lie that we are the highest tax nation in the world, which isn't even close to true. The U.S. has a higher corporate tax rate than other countries, but when it comes to overall taxes, we rank 32nd. And overall is an important distinction, as in the stock market under Trump is doing well, but overall, we're still <laughs> A reporter tried to fact check Trump's highest tax nation claim with White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders on Tuesday, but predictably, got nowhere. The president repeated this claim in the Oval Office today, saying we're the highest tax nation in the world. Why does the president keep saying this? Uh, it's not true overall. We are the highest taxed uh, corporate tax in the uh, developed economy. That's a fact. But that's not what the president said. That's what, he's, that's what he's talking about. We are the highest corporate taxed country in uh, the developed economies across the globe. Well, Sarah, so that's, that's accurate, but the president keeps repeating this claim that we're the highest tax nation. And that's what, in, we are the highest tax corporate nation. That's, that's not what he said. He said we're the highest tax nation in the world. The highest tax corporate nation, it seems pretty consistent to me. Trying to get the truth out of Sarah Huckabee Sanders is like trying to get blood from Mike Pence. <laughs> you know his veins are just full of whiteout. But while he continues to push a tax cut plan that would disproportionately benefit the wealthy, Trump also continues to insist, despite reality, that he is providing voters what he repeatedly promised on the campaign trail, great health care that would be much cheaper than what we currently have. On Tuesday, he claimed he was preparing a new executive order that would solve many of the problems in health care. And as has been the case so often before, he refused to provide any actual details. I'll also be signing something probably this week, which is going to go a long way to take care of many of the people that have been so badly hurt on health care. And they'll be able to buy, they'll be able to cross state lines, and they will get great competitive health care, and it will cost the United States nothing. When someone tells you their product will cost nothing, that's a good sign to steer clear. <laughs> when you see a bucket that says free clams, you don't eat those clams. <laughs> but while while Trump struggles to advance his domestic agenda, he's also been locked at a feud with members of his own party, in particular Tennessee Senator Bob Corker, a Republican, who warned on Sunday that Trump's reckless threats towards other countries could lead the nation on the path to World War III. Trump hit back at Corker yesterday, not with a cogent argument, but with a new nickname, tweeting, the failing New York Times set little Bob Corker up by recording his conversation, was made to sound a fool, and that's what I am dealing with. <laughs> that's what I'm dealing with? Hey, man, you're the leader of the free world. Stop talking like a stressed-out Burger King manager. 
I got two guys out today. I'm working the drive through myself, plus the mouse is back. So, yeah, that's what I'm dealing with. <laughs> now, Corker's warning about Trump is urgent and necessary, but the most revealing thing he said was not about Trump. It was actually about the Republican Party as a whole. Corker told the New York Times that the people around Trump, as well as his fellow Republican senators, know and agree that Trump is unfit for office. Corker told the Times, I know for a fact that every single day at the White House, it's a situation of trying to contain him. The vast majority of our caucus understands what we're dealing with here. Of course, they understand the volatility that we're dealing with and the tremendous amount of work that it takes by people around him to keep him in the middle of the road. That sounds less like he's talking about a president and more like the safety talk to the workers who got Kong into that Broadway theater. <laughs> and of course, it's not just Corker who's questioned Trump's fitness for office. Last week, it was reported that Secretary of State Rex Tillerson had privately called Trump a moron. And yesterday, Trump shot back in an interview. When asked about the Tillerson report, Trump said, I think it's fake news. But if he did that, I guess we'll have to compare IQ tests and I can tell you who is going to win. <laughs> oh. That is a bummer, though, because the first question is, who would win an IQ test? And the answer is Tillerson. <laughs> in fact, I'm willing to bet any Rex would beat you in an IQ test. And most Rexes are dogs. <laughs> and if you're wondering... <laughs> if you're wondering what happened in that meeting that led Tillerson calling Trump a moron, NBC reported today that Trump told National Security Advisors that he wants nearly 10 times the number of nuclear weapons held in the current stockpile. You don't need 10 times the nuclear weapons. What we have is enough. Trump is the kind of guy who would get two orders of all-you-can-eat pancakes. <laughs> all right, that's all I can eat. I'll take my next order. <laughs> and this will not shock you. Trump was furious at the report about his new comments and even threatened to revoke NBC's broadcast license on Twitter. Later in the Oval Office, he lamented the fact that the United States has a free press. General Mattis put out a statement, or is putting out a statement, saying that that was fake news, that it was just mentioned that way. And it's frankly disgusting the way the press is able to write whatever they want to write. And people should look into it. People should look into it? Not only is he a wannabe dictator, he's a lazy wannabe dictator. <laughs> it's not that hard to look into it. It's literally the First Amendment. Even Rex the dog is like, it's one sentence, dude. <laughs> but IQ test aside, let's step back and think about this. A Republican senator is admitting that virtually his entire party knows the president is unstable and dangerous and has essentially done nothing about it. If this is what Republicans really believe, then at the very least, they have to exercise some restraint over Trump and rein him in, if not remove him from office. And yet many Republicans are doing the opposite. Congressman Mark Meadows, chairman of the Hardline Freedom Caucus, seemed to accidentally admit that he and his colleagues were being cowardly when he was asked about those comments from Corker, who plans to retire at the end of his term. Meadows said of Corker, it's easy to be bold when you're not coming back. So you all know he's a bad guy, but you don't want to tell the rest of us. Do you work in Congress or on the board of the Weinstein Company? Trump's White House, meanwhile, has been struggling to mount a convincing defense of Trump's behavior, and in particular, his reckless threats towards North Korea. Sanders shot back at Corker, although I'm not sure her argument was all that persuasive. Senator Corker is certainly entitled to his own opinion, but he's not entitled to his own facts. Uh, the fact is, this president has been a, an incredibly strong leader on foreign policy and national security. That's not a fact. That's an opinion. <laughs> You're entitled to your own opinions, but not your own dictionaries. If Republicans genuinely, genuinely believe that the president is unstable and dangerous, then giving interviews isn't enough. They have to actually do something about it by exercising some oversight or removing him from office. And if you don't know how that works... People should look into it. This has been a closer look.